Hi everybody and welcome back to The Upper Room. This week we're talking about a touchy subject, hell. I decided to talk about hell because I have many friends and many people that I know that don't even believe that hell exists. But we've had several saints throughout the centuries who were taken to hell and shown it and then sent back here to earth to write about it. From generation to generation, all stories are the same. The most recent story is from St. Maria Faustina Kowalska. St. Maria Faustina Kowalska is a great saint who is responsible for giving us the divine mercy image that Jesus appointed for her to, to have made for us all over the world to come to his mercy, as well as giving us the divine mercy chaplet, which Jesus instructed her to create for us, to be able to, for us to be able to have a means to, be, to tap into his mercy. Here's what Sister Faustina wrote about hell in her diary. I, Sister Faustina Kowalska, by the order of God, have visited the abyss of hell, so that I might tell souls about it and testify to its existence. The devils were full of hatred for me, but they had to obey me at the command of God. What I, w what I have written is but a pale shadow of the things I saw, but I noticed one thing, that most of the souls there are those who disbelieved that there is a hell. Today I was led by an angel to the chasms of hell. It is a place of great torture. How awesomely large and extensive it is. The kinds of tortures I saw. The first torture that constitutes hell is the loss of God. The second is the perpetual remorse of conscience. The third is that one's condition will never change. The fourth is the, the fire that will penetrate the soul without destroying it. A terrible suffering, since it is purely spiritual fire, lit by God's anger. The fifth torture is continual darkness and a terrible suffocating smell, and despite the darkness, the devils and the souls of the damned see each other and all the evil but of, of others and their own. The sixth torture, the constant company of Satan. The seventh torture is horrible despair hatred of God, vile words, curses, and blasphemes. She goes on to say, These are the tortures suffered by all the damned together, but that is not the end of the sufferings. Indescribable sufferings. There are special tortures destined for particular souls. These are the torments of the senses. Each soul undergoes terrible and indescribable sufferings related to the manner in which it has sinned. She said, I would have died. These are the caverns, there are caverns and pits of torture where one f form of agony differs from another. I would have died at the very sight of these tortures if the, if the omnipotence of God had not supported me. No one can say that there is no hell. Let the sinner know that he will be tortured throughout all eternity in those senses which he made use of to sin. I am writing this at the command of God so that no soul may find an excuse by saying there is no hell or that nobody has ever been there and so no one can say that what it is like. How terribly souls suffer there. Consequently, I pray even more fervently for the conversion of sinners. I insistently plead God's mercy upon them. O oh my Jesus, I would rather be in agony until the end of the world amidst the greatest sufferings than offend you by the least sin. This is a great saint who has miracles revolving around her death, who has given us many devotions to Jesus, and, she, and, and the Vatican has proved that all of their findings have been true with her. Please take this video to heart. She is not the only saint that has given us explanations of hell. There are other saints as well, but I want to go to the Bible. There's many verses that speak about hell. In the Old Testament, hell is referred to 31 times using the name Sheol. In Genesis, Malachi, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Psalms, and Hosea all refer to hell. In the New Testament, hell is referred to several times as well. Jesus refers to hell first in the book of Matthew, where if your eye sins, he tells us to pluck it out. And if your hand sins, he tells us to cut it off. He tells us, it is better to go through life with one of your members casted from your body 
than for your whole body to be thrown into hell because one of your members sins. In the book of Revelations, we also read, And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image, and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also shall drink the wine of God's wrath, poured unmixed into the cup of his anger, and his and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. These worshippers of the beast and its image and whoever receives the mark of his name. If hell didn't exist, why do all these holy people write about it? All these men and women who have been chosen by God. How is it that Jesus himself even spoke about it? Are we to say Jesus is a liar? No, never. It is with truth and honesty of God himself, Jesus Christ, and all of these righteous and holy men and women that we know about hell. Out of their great love for humanity, out of their great love for us, and out of their great love for God, they did his will and warned us as God has instructed them to do. This is the truth. It is not a lie. Hell does exist. It's not some fantasy made up place to scare people into doing something that is good and holy. But for those of you who love goodness, who love joy, who love honesty and integrity, who love all the things of light, who love all the things that are good and holy, there is hope. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the Holy Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. Through Jesus and the blood of the Lamb, we are saved. Without Him, we are lost forever. Pursue righteousness, faith, and pray for all those who call to God out of a pure heart. Thanks again for watching. Welcome to the Upper Room. I'm Jared. See you again next week.